You've been crushing your trail miles and your body's beat up. And you ask yourself, how do I recover? Well, I'm gonna give you my four major tips that I like to do to keep a relatively sound body. I mean, the reality is there's no like Huberman hack out there that you're actually gonna like find the magic bullet, but there are common things you can do to basically just take care of yourself better, be a little more injury resilient, and hopefully enjoy the miles. So we're gonna teach you how to be relaxed like Kitty here. No, stop, stop it, stop. <laughs> so, welcome to Tim's rehab corner. We don't know if she has rabies, do we? <laughs> uh, or if it's a feral cat, or if it's actually the pet cat. She was sleeping in my bed last night, so we'll see. <laughs> if I start frothing at the mouth. My first one that I really like to do is stay hydrated, especially where I live up in Mammoth, it's high altitude and the air is very dry so you get dehydrated and if you're dehydrated your muscles aren't going to respond real well they're more susceptible to injury um, and so hydration is key you know i keep my my canteen with me everywhere i go so it reminds me to drink um, and then after i'm done i try to pop at least one or two little like you know goo electrolyte tabs into my my water bottle and and just drink that um, another good thing is if you're running over about 60 minutes in a single run you should probably carry a bottle and practice drinking while you're running. Um, that also just helps kind of um, buffer just the dehydration that you might be experiencing. Um, <clears throat> and for long trail races, you get used to carrying something. Uh, oftentimes you have to have a bottle or a backpack. So I think specificity in training is great. Um, so yeah, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Uh, I mean, you can get into fancy different drink mixes and whatnot, but honestly, like you just need to drink something. So if that helps you get the fluid in, then go for it. But if, if you're on a budget or if you don't want to experiment with that stuff, then like, honestly, just get, get a glass of water. Yeah, oh man, you are shedding everywhere, kitty. <laughs> oh, you're so happy, aren't you? Especially in the heat, not only are you gonna lose water content, you're gonna lose sodium. So that's an important thing that you kind of consider. And, and a lot of the different sports drinks will have kind of a, you know, electrolyte balance or sodium concentrate that will help replenish. So I use, again, some of those goo tabs that are really helpful, um, but pretty much any brand will, ha will have things. And I think if you're curious about how much you sweat or if you're a high sodium sweater, you can buy these over the counter little patches to put on your arm and run a simple test. You know, you wear that patch for probably 60 minutes of exercise and then afterwards you can scan it and it will give you a, a very, you know, very rough, kind of raw data point, but it's something if you're just totally curious. Um, so I, I think that's something to keep in mind is the sodium. I get properly knackered, like my muscles when, like I start training for a trail race, I increase my vert and inevitably, that means you're pounding down hills and your muscles get pretty sore and tender. So something I really like to do is regular, just kind of self body work, you know, combination of maybe Maybe I'm uh, I'm cheap or I'm just like you know busy, but I don't often go out and get worked on um, by people. It's a luxury if I do. But um, something I've learned is a combination of like foam rolling and then also just kind of self myofascial releasing. And and so what I like to do is if I find like a an area that's a little tender or like tied up, I'll basically do a little series of kind of muscle tagging and and moving to to basically almost like floss the tissue underneath my my trigger points. So. Like if the you know distal part of my quad or you know the quadricep tendon is a little irritated, what I'll do is I'll take my thumbs and I'll just kind of find that area and kind of sink in with a little bit of pressure. And while while holding it or tagging it, I'll then actively kind of straighten and flex and extend my knee so that that tissue and the tendon or the muscle belly that I'm working on underneath my fingers is gliding back and forth, and it's a nice way to essentially just release that tension in the tissue and i'll do it for maybe two or three little kind of uh i think she's allergic to herself <laughs> i'll i'll uh i think we're all gonna break out pretty soon <laughs> yeah. but what i'll do is I'll, I'll tag that spot and then maybe do two or three kind of like you know movements in and out and then i'll reposition my my thumbs maybe half an inch or an inch higher do the same thing and just work my way up and down the muscle belly all the way into these areas that like I feel tight and you'll start to notice 
it release a bit. Uh, you know, if you initially push down and you feel like just a really tight band or almost like a like a, a knotted up area, as you start to work it, it should start to ease off and almost feel like you're you're pressing into like warm butter where your thumbs start to sink in deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, so I like to do that through any of the little like niggles that I that pop up, which honestly, like I tell patients if if I took a day off every time I hurt, I would never run. It's uh, it's kind of, you know, what happens, but it's all about budgeting like, hey, is this soreness from training and it's expected or is this, have I overdone it and am I experiencing pain? And for me, what I like to do is I visualize a stoplight. You know, everyone knows, you know, the red, yellow and green lights. And so I'll ask myself if, okay, right here is irritated today. Like the, or the questions I'll ask myself are, is the pain getting worse while I run? Um, is it staying stable or is it actually improving throughout the run? And if it's improving throughout the run, I consider it like a green light. That's a good sign. It probably warmed up and it loosened. If it's staying about the same, you're kind of in that yellow light range um, where you got to be cautious. Like you really kind of pay attention. Like, is this leading to compensatory patterns or am I starting to limp or am I like truly changing my gait? Um, those could open you, open you up for some more issues. And then if it's worsening while you run, then that's the red light. You really need to back off. You need to take a break. You need to, if you can't figure out what it is, probably go seek professional guidance. Um, but I kind of use that little stoplight kind of uh, visualization to troubleshoot my own little injuries. Um, and it, it's a good way to kind of triage whether or not it's something you should really work through or if it's, no, this is a hard stop and I should probably go get it taken care of. Get your quads, your hamstrings, your calf muscles are really great. My back gets really tight, so I'll try and open it up just laying on the foam roller and just kind of doing some extension mobs through there. Uh, but that kind of stuff I think is really helpful just to keep mobility because we need to have that balance between you know, mobility and stability as a runner. And oftentimes we get a little too tight and you lose that mobility and that can lead to like injury risk. Do you think the cat likes water? <laughs> nope. Mm. Martini. Oh. The life of leisure, am I right? I think the most overlooked piece of recovery is literally do nothing. Just lay down, take a nap, put your feet in the pool. If you're a swimmer, go swim. Uh, I think puttering is a great way just to unwind, you know, the mind, the body. Uh, you don't need anything fancy. You don't need any of those pressurized boots. You literally put your feet up on the, the edge of a wall, drain your, drain your legs. Uh, but I, I like to chill. I think that's my favorite thing to do. We intentionally got a dog that is not a runner. She can go like half a mile and then she peters out because I want to go for a walk. I don't want to go for another run on top of my run on top of my run. So. I think, you know, just relaxing, hanging out with loved ones or puttering. I picked up sewing as a hobby. It's a pretty fun little task. You can't, uh, as far as I know, there's no aggressive sewing competitions out there. So I find a, it's a nice way just to, you know, kind of ease off the competitive juices and prick my finger a few times. But yeah, Netflix and chill as the kids say. <laughs>